Phil in Liverpool, England. Seems, I would say the last three questions we had are from England. And I don't know when you're seeing this video, because as you know, I record these on my Saturday mornings. I come down here to be with you on my Saturday morning. And next week, I think on the 25th, something like that, of September, Terry, Scott, my son Scott, Chris Brunhaver, and myself are all flying to London on the United flight out of Denver. We take a direct flight over to London's Heathrow. And we're going to go to the, the show at the Royal Ascot Gardens. And if you remember, last year we went and sadly, Her Majesty the Queen died. And so they closed everything up. So we are looking forward to finally being at that show and meeting all of you. So if you are, you're probably hearing this after, I don't know when, I, I can't keep track of all that. But anyway, if you are, come visit us. If not, sorry we missed you. <laughs> or maybe we said hi. All right, he's still from England. And he writes to me, I currently have a Mark Levinson, number 519 media player, okay, and it gives the choice of playing normal or wide PLL. Without really explaining the advantages of this, or what the heck a PLL is, if any, with your infinite knowledge. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Uh, would it be possible to explain this process and advantages or not of using this facility. Uh, sure. First off, let's, let, let's look and see wh what is a PLL. A PLL is a phase locked loop, which, you know, it's, it's probably doesn't tell you much of anything, does it? So we use PLLs when we have a clock or an incoming fixed frequency of something. So let's say that our CD player is outputting 44.1 kilohertz, just because we all know that frequency, right? And it's going into our DAC. Well, our DAC has to, uses that CD player for its master clock, but in many cases, we use a tracking method to see how close that 44.1 is. And I, I'm pretty sure that Mark Levinson, like PS Audio, reclocks that master clock, because we don't particularly like the clocks that come in from our sources. They're usually not very good, they're not very steady. And so in order to create our own clock, we have to know what the clock is that's coming in. So there's a way to measure that. And then we need to know from a particular reference how close that clock is to what it should be. And that's where the PLL comes in. So a phase lock loop basically in a fairly narrow range, and you can set it wide or narrow, and which is what you're doing there, says that if it's coming in at some frequency other than 44.1, it's like it's slightly off, it creates a phase difference. And that phase difference in this phase locked loop is locked onto the frequency and it generates a voltage that is directly relatable to the amount of phase error. I don't want to get too crazy on this stuff, but the farther away it is from the ideal frequency, the higher the voltage, okay? Now, what do we do with that voltage? Well, that goes into what's called a VCO, which is a voltage-controlled oscillator, or some means, of, there, there are other things we can do with it. And, and that matches, then mat, will match this. So we change the frequency of the voltage-controlled oscillator, the two match each other, bing, bada, boom. The reason that we would have a wide or a narrow on that, I'm guessing in theirs, is because what you don't want is the thing moving back and forth. Like when we build phase lock loops into our DACs, we have what we call a time constant in there that's very, very slow. So those changes happen like only once every second or so. And 
as we move to catch up or to speed up or slow down, we don't want you to hear that change because that's jitter if you can hear it, if it's in the audible range. But if we do it really slowly, you won't hear the difference. So that's how we do it. I, I don't particularly know what they're doing, but on a narrow, uh, I'm guessing a narrow PLL will sound better. And it's assuming that whatever you're using to feed it is pretty accurate. So if that solution is there, that's probably the one that you're going to like the best. If you do a wide one, it says, well, I'll take pretty much anything you got, and I'm going to vary it a lot, and that might make more jitter. Just a guess. But that's basically what's going on. So I hope that helped and didn't go whoosh, way over people's heads. <laughs> All right, thanks. I'll talk to you later. Bye.